John Manuel Marquez. A week later on HBO pay-per-view, Roy Jones returns to light heavyweight to battle the man now holding his belt, Antonio Tarver. HBO boxing for 30 years, building legends one round at a time. We are in Buffalo, New York, downtown Buffalo gleaming in anticipation of tomorrow's big Bills effort against the Philadelphia Eagles. And equally excited about the arrival here in the ring moments from now of Tonawanda, New York's baby Joe Macy. Tonawanda, a northern suburb of Buffalo, going against DeBarro Williamson, the touch of sleep. Uh, Williamson, a former amateur star who didn't turn professional until he was 30 years old. Emmanuel Stewart, you've been looking at Joe Macy since he was an amateur. Uh, he was an alternate on the 1996 Olympic team. I know you've seen a good deal of him, both as an amateur and a pro. Does he, in fact, have the kind of talent that it takes to become a legitimate heavyweight contender? I think he has a talent, and based on a lot of things, one of them being, Jim, the fact that it's not a real dominant power for heavyweight out there. Most of the guys are on a certain level, so to say. Uh, and the fact that uh, you got two heavyweight champions up there today, which are right, small guys compared to him height-wise, they mean in Roy Jones and you got Chris Bird, so he could very easily become a big force. Maybe two years ago, I would not have said that because of Lennox Lewis and the big guys. But right now, if he can come through an impressive victory tonight, I think we definitely have to look at him as a serious heavyweight. Man, he's fighting to Barrow Williamson uh, by acclamation of ringside experts, toughest opponent so far for baby Joe Macy. Williamson has a big right hand for a relatively small heavyweight, but that's just about his only major credential. Larry, would victory over DeVarrell Williamson under these circumstances certify Joe Macy as a major leaguer? Well, he probably would be a um, quadruple A player. Too good for the minor leagues, not yet established as a major leaguer. The question is whether uh, Macy as a local sensation, a regional fighter, can become a national force. Sort of like Buffalo Wings, which used to be a local delicacy. Many such fighters don't travel well. Sort of like grits. Williamson is not a supreme test. He's not the test that will tell us how good he is. He's not the final exam, but he is a test. All right, so let's get ready to see Joe Macy take the test against DeVaro Williamson. And we'll start, as always, with the tale of the tape. The third set of heavyweights to enter the ring tonight. And already we've seen 20 rounds of heavyweight boxing. Macy is 29 years old. Williamson, 35 and a prospect. It's pretty much now or never. Three-inch height advantage for the touch of sleep. Arm length advantage. Also for Williamson, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. But look at Joe Macy with a 23 and a quarter pound weight advantage over Williamson coming in. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The baby Joe Macy, the Vera Williamson fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be sent to bell in any round, including the tenth and final round. Jim! All right, here comes one of the most interesting and laudable people you'll meet in boxing. Came out of a very difficult childhood to make it as a human being in life. He's tried several sports, finally came late to boxing, tried twice to make a United States Olympic team. He is a terrific human being, if not yet a terrific heavyweight boxer. Tried everything in college, football, basketball, track, stand-up comedy, acting, uh, and in fact was a cheerleader as well. He was Willie the Wildcat, the mascot at Northern Michigan University. He was a cheerleader. He was good enough as a football player that he actually got a tryout at one point as a quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. In his first appearance on HBO, 
He fought against Feliz Sabon, the Cuban giant superstar at the Goodwill Games in New York. Sabon knocked him in the next week. Williamson likes to say, yeah, Felix eked out a victory over me. And here now with Larry is a closer look at the barrel Williamson. He has a, a master's degree in administration. Perhaps we'll, we'll use it to go into politics after his boxing career. He calls his right hand a touch of sleep. And the reason it got so powerful, he theorizes, is that he threw so many passes as a quarterback, telling us that he could throw the ball 90 yards and more. End zone, end zone. That's what he said. Now, for those of you who've been pining away for those theatrical Prince Nassim Hamed entrances ever since Nassim self disappeared himself from the sport two and a half years ago, get ready because Joe Macy enters to pyrotechnics, electrical fireworks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and under a sign that depicts him in, oh, I'd say, five story height. Here we go. As much fire from him in the ring. The Barrel Williamson's people were worried about how long this would take. The New York State Athletic Commission issued a ruling that Macy must make it into the ring within two minutes of the beginning of the entrance. So there's a little hustle in his bustle as he makes his way through the crowd. Buffalo hasn't had a fighter to cheer about for a very long time, and the fans are making the most of it. They're making up for lost time. told this is an abbreviated version of his last walk-in. When Macy was an alternate for the 1996 United States Olympic team in Atlanta, his fellow heavyweight alternate was DeBarrel Williamson. They sparred against each other as amateur. And now amid the chaos, a closer look at Joe Macy, Larry. Joe Macy himself was a national honor student in high school, now trying to become a national honor student in the heavyweight division. They call him Baby Joe. Some skeptics up here in northern New York say he has been a baby to Joe because of the quality of his opposition. But everyone agrees He's the third professional franchise in Buffalo after the Bills and the Sabres. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, DeBella Entertainment and Tony Holden Productions are proud to present the main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing 
in the heavyweight division. Brought to you in association with your king of beers, Budweiser, and sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ron Scott Stevens, Commissioner in attendance, Jerome Becker. If this bout should go to the scorecards, the three judges scoring are Tommy Kazmarek, Wynn Kintz, and Melvina Lathan. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Wayne Kelly. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from Buffalo, New York. Let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with red and officially weighing 232 and three quarter pounds. 